What does it take to respond to the largest natural disaster expected for the United States? We had a magnitude nine earthquake. In 2016, emergency operations centers from 62 Washington cities, counties, and tribes, 75 hospitals, along with the National Guard, conducted an elaborate drill, an exercise involving 23,000 people, aircraft, Navy ships, setting out to find out how well we could deal with the worst case scenario from a magnitude nine Cascadia earthquake and tsunami. This exercise even had a name, Cascadia Rising. Here's what they expected. Nearly 8,500 people killed in the initial earthquake and tsunami, more than 12,000 injured, more than a half million buildings destroyed or damaged. One and a quarter million of us will need food and water. Add to that more than three quarter of a million pets. 410,000 people will require emergency shelter, a disaster expected to grow worse with time, especially in bad weather. The chances are that you'll survive it. The challenge is surviving the aftermath. As the head of the state's emergency management division and as a former fighter pilot, Robert Azell always has plans for contingencies and says you need to as well. Why? In a magnitude 9 disaster, the damage gets worse as you get closer to the fault. Roads suffering complete or severe damage. Ground transportation to the coast cut off. I-5 from north to south, roads experience severe to moderate damage. 30% of fire stations, nearly half of police stations destroyed. More than a third of hospitals rendered unusable. 45% of hospital capacity lost. And the exercise immediately blew up the idea that we as citizens only needed three days of food, water, and supplies. We need to change the messaging. We need to change it now. It's the right thing to do. And we did it. Everybody in the state is urged to have two weeks of food, water, medication, and more on this list. This brochure has been distributed physically or downloaded by nearly a quarter million Washingtonians. Now they're going to do it again. It too will have a name. CR 22, scheduled for the year 2022, and planning has begun. It's a drill that could be bigger than the first. Communications, mass care and sheltering, public health and medical, transportation, and then um, energy. So looking at those basic areas, making sure that we've invested time in the planning, how we're gonna work together at all levels of government to meet the needs in all of those areas, and then go back and test those plans to see how we how effective they have been. How to get the lights back on, how to get our cars and trucks gassed up. Preparation takes time. We just can't see the clock. You've got to balance the thinking that you might have time against the reality is that it could be tomorrow. Glenn Farley, King 5 News. Active duty troops, the United States Navy and observers from 14 other states came to participate or observe Cascadia Rising. And once the 2022 event is over, they'll start planning for the next one. If you'd like more information on becoming prepared for two weeks, not a couple days, but two weeks, and you'd like to learn more about earthquake hazards around the West, all you have to do is text the word disaster to 206-448-4545.